Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And this is my follow up video to Verizon's Q1 earnings reports. Um, they ended the earnings calls. I tuned into the entire call. And what you're seeing on screen currently is the infograph of the Q1, Q1 earnings, which I will leave a link to that in the description so you guys may check it out. So this was an interesting quarter to break down. So once again, Verizon took a loss overall, and that was the 68,000 net losses that they reported. But you got to remember that was a mix between business gains and consumer losses. So the consumer losses were a staggering 158,000 for the quarter. Now, the reason they're celebrating and the reason people are saying there's upside is because they did not lose as much as they did last year in Q1. Last year's Q1, they lost 263,000 versus 158,000 in this quarter. So that's about 105,000 or so less losses, but they still lost. So I, I just, I never understood that. I don't know how you can sit there and celebrate losses. Just because you lost less, you still lost. So that was an interesting uh, thought of mine during the earnings call. They were celebrating it and I'm seeing analysts already saying, hey, Verizon had better numbers, but they still took losses. So for the quarter, uh, what I wanted to discuss here is the churn as well. That remained relatively flat. So Q1 last year, year over year, a 0.1% improvement. So last year, Q1, they had a churn of 0.90. And this Q1, they have a churn of 0.89. So not much movement there on the churn. They keep reporting, and they discussed this during the earnings call again, they keep reporting a four basis points lower of a churn in the C-band markets. So that's, that's an interesting... Um, because now they, they reported, and members, you guys are already aware of this, they reported 250 million pops officially publicly. They, they, they reported that during the earnings calls, and that was uh, part of the prepared remarks. So that's good to see. But you cover 250 million pops, and your churn is lower in the C-band markets, so why is your churn not lower overall? Right, 250 million pops, that's, that's, that's a huge part of the landmass now covered with C-band, right? They're, now they're on their way to 300 million pops, although they did not officially disclose that again. They did not guide that they're going to 300, and nobody asked during the earnings call if they're, if they're headed to 300 million pops or whatever, you know? So that was not disclosed. So something interesting that I wanted to close out this video with, and then we'll discuss that, and we'll discuss several other points in different videos, is there was a great question asked by Craig Moffitt. He said, how hungry are you for more spectrum? What if DISH, what if US Cellular decided to sell assets? Would you be interested in purchase? And Hans kind of gave an answer stating that he's okay with what he got right now. So he's pretty much, I, I'm not saying he's shutting the door to that idea because he did say he, he'll look into it, but he said he wants to build the network one time. He doesn't want to have to go back to sites to deploy new radios and then have to worry about the handsets to make sure that it has that specific frequency. His current assets today, he wants to go and build the network one time and that's it. He doesn't want to have to go back to sites. So we might have to start thinking differently about new spectrum assets for Verizon, um, especially as it comes to if DISH and US Cellular do buy, I mean, do sell their assets. And, and you know, we don't even know if Verizon would even be allowed to buy more Spectrum depending on the FCC Spectrum screening, right? So, uh, interesting. A lot of people have negative thoughts about that because, you know, Spectrum is the lifeblood of the network. But he is saying, I got 161 megahertz of C-band on average nationwide. I have, and he's like, I'm not even tapping anywhere close to that potential today. He's like, I still have markets that are 60, 80 megahertz. He's saying that, and they and they said this in previous uh, conferences as well, that they can do still do splits, uh, sales splits at the regional level down to the zip code. The engineers can still decide to build densification um, where needed. So they're okay with what they have today. And he's even saying for decades to come. That's why they bought the amount of C-band that they did for the amount that they got it for. So 
not really surprised there by history. Verizon doesn't really go big on Spectrum, right? We saw that during LTE. They had the lowest amount of Spectrum per customer. They did buy some of that AWS 3, but they didn't participate in 600. They didn't participate in AWS 4. They just, they just didn't. Right. And we, we kind of saw that again. Right. They didn't participate in DOD. They did not uh, participate in that. So they want to deploy one one time, one touch, and that's it. That's, he wants to stick to that. And and it's a good strategy, but we'll, we'll see what the outcome is in the future. For now, they continue to take losses on the consumer. Of course, that's I know that's bad to say, but it's helping the network. There's less customers on it. Um, they do grow FWA. That's that's a momentum gainer there. We'll see how that pans out in the future. Uh, we'll discuss that in, in, in a longer video later on today. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Like, share, subscribe if you're new. Follow my social media outlets. This is Tyrone with Tech Live. See y'all in the next one. Peace.